Hi, the uh, y'all. Welcome to my shop for another Four Ways collaboration video. I'm not much of a chess player. My, my dad, when I was growing up, taught me and my, my two brothers uh, how to play chess. And I play, we played a little bit when we were kids, but I never really got much into it at this strategy. But I really, uh, since I got into wood turning, I've enjoyed turning chess sets. I've turned uh, uh, about three of them. So when S Sam Angelo suggested turning a chess set, like, yes, uh, uh, a chess piece, yes, I'm all in for that. One of my collaboration partners, Tomislav Tomasec, lives just outside of Zagreb, so uh, it certainly made sense for me to pick the Zagreb 59 uh, design. It's an uh, adaptation of one of the most popular uh, chess designs used in major uh, tournaments in the 50s and 60s, notably the one in Zagreb in 1959. Let's talk about wood. Wood uh, needs, for the light pieces, you want a light wood. You want a tight grain. You don't want uh, anything too exotic that's kind of camouflaged the, the design. Um, when it comes to the darker pieces, you can either use dark dark wood uh, if you don't want to have exotics available. Certainly, walnut will work. But you know, on my pieces, I've tended to dye them uh, with a black dye, or in one case, even a green dye. Now, I know many of you uh, like to kind of wing it when it comes to uh, turning something on the lathe. But let me tell you, on a chess set, you need to have a plan. When I first started, uh, uh, got interested in turning a chess set, I did a lot of research, and every time I found a, a good picture from some outfit selling chess sets. I put it in my Pinterest uh, wood, uh, chess, chess pieces uh, a board and saved it as, as a reference. When you find a set you like, uh, copy the picture, put it in uh, on your computer, scale it up and down in, in Word, for example, uh, to get to the right size, and then make you a storyboard. A storyboard is the key to being able to replicate the pieces where you've got, got your design, the right size, and you got all the pieces uh, all the uh, appropriate sizes marked. And it's not that hard to make these pieces all look alike. The key is cutting, the, trimming the wood to the exact uh, dimensions, diameter, and maybe an eighth inch long to make uh, to allow room for, for truing up. Now, many players like to have some heft to their, their pieces, so they wind up weighting them, and that can be a challenge for, uh, for your chucking method. We're going to drill a hole, but before we do that, we're going to square up the end. It's best to cut these on a table saw if you can, but uh, if you're careful with a band saw, that'll work, work fine as well. So we're just going to true this up a little bit with a scraper. Okay, next we're going to take a three Forstner bit and we're going to drill a hole approximately 5 sixteenths to 3 eighths of an inch uh, thick to hold a U.S. penny because that's what I'm going to do for a weight. When I was doing an interactive remote demonstration for a Canadian club, I was shocked to find out that the Canadians no longer use, use penny. Uh, so if you're outside the U.S., find a low uh, value coin that's a, close to a U.S. penny and three quarters inch and maybe, maybe consider using that. So we're going to slow this down just a little bit. No more than, no more than about 500. Hold our hand on here. Now that you got the three-quarter inch hole drilled, we're going to come in here with a uh, a hand drill. To, and because we got a divot, it's easy enough to put it in there and drill. That's going to be for the woodworm screw we're going to to use. So you're wondering where I'm going with this. Where we're going is we're going to make a uh, screw mandrel. Uh, that has a three-quarter inch step that will fit in this hole. It's also got a, a woodworm screw of your, your choice, uh, and, and it, it, it's got to fit in your chuck. The next step is going to be a little bit smaller than the piece you're turning, and that allows you to roll over a bead or, or whatever without destroying this next step. And the next step is going to be the exact size, and you can kind of use that for sizing. So when we cut the wood exactly the right size, uh, we don't have to worry about keep calibering them to get the diameter. You get them centered, they're going to be round and they're going to be going to be centered. You mount this off off the, the, the lathe because a lot of times that wood that screw is not going to screw in, it's going to spin back here, and that's okay. The main thing is that you get the bottom flush, that's why you had to face this off. Then use uh, a screwdriver to tighten that screw down and then come back and tighten it one more time and you're gonna get it pretty snug. Now you're gonna go ahead and mount it in your chuck. And 
you want to learn more about making a pen mandrel, uh, check out the link in the description to an article I wrote for American Woodturner. I've also got a recent article that talked about uh, screw chucks in the British magazine Woodturning, edited by my good friend Emiliano Oxval. So I'm going to use my 3 8 cent spindle gouge to turn this round at a fairly high speed. And I can tell that I've got it pretty close to the right size because it looks like it matches. I don't want to be square sides. I'm in good good shape now because I've turned a number of these pawns. I'm just going to sort of sort of wing it. I want to get the head to uh, to be close to the, the the right size, and then I'm just going to turn this down as a cone. When I say I'm going to wing it, I've got a storyboard. I've, I've done a few of these, so I know what size to, to make this. The head of this is going to be pretty close to 5 eighths of an inch, so I've got it pretty much calipered on, on track. A key dimension here is going to be the, the, the size of the head, so let me mark that. Now I'm just going to turn a turn a sphere there. Just a big bead. That's pretty close. Now I'm going to have a collar. I'm going to set that dimension with my skew. That's going to be the bottom of the collar. The collar is going to be just a bit wider than the uh, than the head, so let's go ahead and take that down. And now I'm just going to go straight on a diagonal. And that collar is just a little bit taller than I want it, so no problem, I'll just cut it back. We're going to have just a little bit of a chamfer here. And then we're going to come in there slightly. Right there. This is going to be a large bead. going to come down into a bit of a cove and then we're going to pick up this cut right here cut this a little deeper and this is actually going to come down just a little bit there we go this big contoured bead we're going to have just a little bit of a cold here and then we're going to take this down a little bit more and that's that's pretty much where we're going with this all we got to do is sand it. Okay, time to cut some felt. We're going to get a scrap of, of felt, um, you know, from wherever you buy material from. I got it from my wife. Uh, uh, you're going to cut it into strip, fold it into, oh, maybe fourths. You're going to have a little small block of wood, and you're going to have a, a scrap block that you faced off. Have a cylinder, little uh, disc 
appropriate to the size of the uh, the little felt strip. Uh, have a little dimple in it so you'll you'll center it. And then you're just simply going to come in there with it with an appropriate size uh, appropriate tool. I've tried different things. You'd think a skew would work, but I found that uh, my uh, spindle gouge works about as well as as anything because it's easier to guide the bubble. So let's get this going. Just come in, get rid of some of the scrap maybe, tighten up, ride the bevel, and now you've got four, four scraps four scraps of, of felt that'll fit your pieces, make different discs for different size pieces. Let's have a brief discussion on, on size. The, the king that I turned was a full size tournament size, which is uh, approximately four inches or so, and it fits on a square uh, board with squares uh, two and a quarter to two and a half inches long. That is a big chess board, so if you're gonna leave it out in the room, it kind of dominates the room. Uh, I wanted something a little smaller, so I scaled my three sets down to, oh, maybe 75 to 80% of a tournament size. And uh, as a result, I could make a board with squares that are one and three quarter inches, which for me was a, a better size. But you've got to make them bigger if it's a tournament size. You can get instructions on uh, chess pieces, uh, the requirements for the International Chess Federation. I'll have a link in the uh, show notes if you're interested in reading up on any details on that. And if you make a chess board, you can also use those uh, circles that you cut on to keep it from rubbing on the table. Okay, the pawn was a warm-up. Now let's turn a king. The king is going to be 44 millimeters at the base, 83 millimeters long. I'm using some hard maple, but you could use um, Bradford pear. You could use persimmon. Any, any hard wood that, that has a very plain, uh, ordinary-looking uh, grain, grain to it. So I've got my storyboard, so I'm going to get a pencil. And before I mark it up, though, I know this is 25 millimeters, this is 25 millimeters, and this is really 25 millimeters just down here. So starting at, at that one point that I'll mark, right about here, I can go ahead and take that down to 25 millimeters. So I'm just going to be a little conservative about front here. And got some calipers that 25. We can do a spot check, and I can... Probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to sort of mark it on the end, uh, but it's kind of uneven, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to use that spot checking. So I'm going to, I could use a skew, I could use a spindle gouge. I'm going to grab the spindle roughing gouge just because it's, it's handy. I've already turned this round because you see me turn that pawn round, so you don't need to see me roughing this out again. But let's start taking this down a little bit. Mark it up, turn the blade off, take our storyboard, and we're this is the end mark, so I'm just gonna put a little tick mark right here, a little tick mark here, that's gonna be the end of that. I measured something wrong here. Oh, I need to finish that off first, because it's it's going to uh, mess me up. It's, I, I cut it three millimeter longer, exact size, 44 millimeter by 88 millimeter, but I've got a little bit extra. So let me face this off first. There's where a storyboard comes in to keep you, keep you out of trouble. Just use spindle gouge. 
adjust this so I cut across center. Actually, heck, might be easier for me to just use a use a skew. So let's get the exact length. And I'll pick this up here, right there. Okay, we'll use the skew to trim that up. I'm going to go ahead and bring up tailstock support. With a pond, you don't really need tailstock support, but in this case, I don't have to worry about the damage because I'm going to put a little feature in the top. And that just keeps the vibration down if I get a little heavy handed. Just do a little down the V cut. Actually, I'm probably going to pass it part of the way down the V cut. Just a little bit, about another millimeter I could take it down. So we'll we'll just keep that and take that into account as we're working through it. Alright, so now we've got this thing where it's spaced right. So there's the top, bottom of that bead, there's the bottom of the triple bead set, and here's where it starts down, and then there's gonna be the the bottom. So let's go ahead and mark that real quick. Got it. I can remember where those are. It's always handy to use relative references when you're working on these. So for example, this is eight millimeter and I think eight millimeter is the distance between those two. Since I haven't completely drawn those circles, I'm easily confused. Let's get the one down here at the, at the bottom first. Top, we got this one. And, and then I believe it should be about eight millimeters between that one and that one. Spot check and that's right on right on the money. So now all we gotta do is draw that circle all the way around. Okay. Alright, so 25 millimeters here, 25 millimeters on the outside of that bead. This is gonna taper down, so I'm gonna make a bead cut here. And we're going to take this part down here, down to 14 millimeters, uh, I believe. A mm, little, bit, little bit thicker, 16 millimeter here, 14 millimeters here. So we're going to go from right to left, leaving as much mass down here as possible. So let's go ahead and make that V cut. It's a lot easier to mark a, a bead with a V cut. Stock support, probably not necessary, but never hurts. I'm going to go ahead and take it down here so I'm going to use the measure. And this would be a challenge if it didn't have a tailstock or a live center of support. So we're looking at 16 millimeters, which is going to be almost three quarters of an inch, I believe. Yep. Almost three quarters of an inch, so we're just, a, we're just about there. So uh, we're going to slope this down, and I'm going to use the spindle gouge for that. Get a little bit closer here, and just go from from this corner right down into that corner. Now we're going to come down below 14 millimeters, 
14 millimeters is closer to just a, a little less than 5 eighths, so we can use the 5 eighths to kind of rough, rough gauge it. So we're going to go ahead and take it down here. This is 16, so I know I've got to go at least below that. some room to uh, bring it down a little bit more. Okay, now I've got three beads, a series of three beads I'm going to make here. And I found the easiest way to do that is to kind of mark almost halfway by eye and then split the difference on the two smaller beads. But this line's going to go away as soon as I start taking the size down. But no matter. We're going to take it down a little bit on that first bead, and then take it down a little bit on the second bead. Looking at the picture, the second bead is slightly proud of the first bead. So that's pretty much where we want to be. Now all we've got to do is start those, those uh, bead, bead cuts for these little beads. It's very easy to make these beads if you've got a series of uh, beading tools, but it turns out these generally aren't the right right size. That one might might almost work. That one might almost work, but it's just not quite right. So it, it's easier for me to just do that without using those. And actually, a, a quarter inch detail gouge to make these beads. down there and then I can do the round over and fine brick sandpaper will clean up those those bead corners whether I use the point tool or single brush if I use it. Then we've got it. Alright now go back to our reference come back here. We're going to start bringing this down. This is uh, 20, 29 millimeters, so it's going to be a 4 millimeters wider than that, so I can kind of visually gauge that. And I'm going to bring that down a little bit with a, a beading tool. Let's get it fast. gauge where we're going when we get close to this. So we've got that, we've got just a tiny little chamfer at the bottom. So I've got that, that gap in there on my uh, screw chuck to make it easy not to damage the, the screw mandrel. So we're just going to come in there and take a small, small chamfer, about a 45 degree, whoa, that wasn't pretty, 45 degree. Now we're going to come right next to that with a deep cut. Okay. And we're just going to clean up that damage a little bit here. And I think that's all it takes. Nothing, nothing serious. So we're just going to start that slope down. I'm going to switch to my 3 8 inch spindle gouge for that, that slope and just start it, start it down. This 
this is lower than that. This is 16, so let's come in here. Got to get the right end of the wrench. So let's bring it down a little bit more. Okay. Now we're going to round over this. Uh, clean up. Clean up this right here. Get the dimensions right again. Okay, so this is 29 millimeters. This has got to come down quite a bit. That looks right here is where we start that slicing in and taking it close. contrasting wood, wood top. Now you can kill these crisp details with sandpaper if you're not careful. Uh, I've got pretty smooth cuts, uh, don't have too uh, many uh, tool marks, so I want to start at probably 240 uh, grit so I don't get too aggressive and I think that'll deal with the very minor tool marks I've got and minimize the chances of me changing the shape. Coming right into the shoulder, coming off, don't, I, want it, I want that sharp edge on this. I fold this over and bring this down. Got a few tool marks here. Right there, got a little bit of a bulge. And round it over maybe a couple of times to get in, to get in that curve so I don't damage that, that crisp detail. Same thing getting in here and cold, round it over so you can sand it inside that cold without damaging that crisp detail, which is Hallmark of these fine, fine pieces. And I go ahead and sand up to uh, uh, on these. Probably depends on whether I'm going to dye them. If I'm going to dye them, I'd probably uh, stop at, uh, at 320. Um, and I would not use the abrasive paste on any ones that I'm going to dye. I want to leave that pores of that wood open to absorb the, the dye. But since this is a light colored piece, I'm going to go ahead and use the abrasive paste and just rub it on there liberally. And this is just about the equivalent of tripling the grit. So if I end at 320, that's going to be a very fine finish indeed. Additional finish on these pieces is Canuba wax. I did that on my first set. Maybe I didn't put enough on there, but it just didn't seem to uh, keep the shine. It just it 
got, got grubby looking, so after that I started using lacquer so I could get a little finer shine to it. Now, before I take this off, one step that I easily forgotten is I need to drill a hole for the little device that's going to go in the top. So let's move that, move that back. Since I've got a little little divot there from the live center, I can it, it, that'll mark this hand drill. I can easily use the one eighth inch drill bit and, and, and center it without too much difficulty. So I'm going to get that up. Rest my left hand on the tool rest, just kind of stabilize it a little bit. Let it find its way. There we go. I don't think I sanded the top, so we need to we need to sand the top. And I want to just knock off this too sharp an edge here. And I don't think I dealt with this these beads as well as I should have. And, 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 uh, look at them. So now it's time to turn the alter the contrasting color from the uh, uh, piece. Uh, the, the top. I'm going to use a couple of common uh, devices to do the measurement. 5 eighths of an inch is, is that size. 11 30 seconds will be, will be that size. So I need to cut that off so let's just get after it. spindle gouge and just just kind of round it over and make point. This part right here needs to be be that uh, that size we need to get that down just a little bit. saying that before I do anything further. I could probably get a little finer, but for this exercise I don't think I'm going to worry about it, but I'm going to show you that uh, brazy paste we're going to be using. So similar to the sanding lubricant, we're just going to get some of that sanding lubricant that's got an abrasive mixed in with it. Mineral oil, beeswax, and diatomaceous earth. We're just going to rub that on there real good liberally and then this is going to like triple the last grit so this will be the equivalent of at least 800 grit and it'll shine like a new penny and then now we can get the speed up a little bit got now come in and raise the tool rest just a little bit and just take our thin thin parting tool Bring it on down to, to an eighth of an inch, fit in the hole in the top of the key. I 
want a slight taper so it'll kind of be a snug fit in there and I'll just check this out. And not quite there yet. And we'll just slow it down just a little bit so hopefully I won't chase it across the floor. And there's the little I don't know what you call it, pickle gruber or something that goes on top. There. And now I can just come in here with a skew and take it down a few millimeters. Tip, we're going to have just a little bit of a ball. And then right here, it's going to be about six millimeter. So let's just take that down to about three millimeter. And nine millimeter here, and then we're going to take it down some right here. I think I've got room to get in there with this parting tool. I think I went down that a little bit too much. Come in here and just do this ball. Just bring it down a little bit there, and a little bit there at the top. I think that's probably close enough. And there's a couple of ways that this can be handled. Um, but what I like to do is take it in this direction just a little bit. Come in. And then we're going to shape this, this bead here. And then we're going to undercut this. I want to get under there with a little bit smaller tool. made me a little small five millimeter beading and parting tool for this, this fine detail work on projects like this. Okay, now, depending on what kind of sander you got, you got to sand this flat. What we're going to do is we're going to make it a little faster. I'm just going to cut off with the saw so you can see what it looks like. So let me kind of look for the crane orientation, see where the best way to saw it. I think probably this will be just fine. side see if I got angle about right 
fine-tune it with sanding. And I find this a lot easier. It's hard to get in there with a sander. Okay, so. This shape looks good. This one I would like to undercut it a little bit. Let's see if that's possible. Uh, I think it's going to be a challenge. So I think what we're going to wind up uh, doing is we're just going to take a, uh, a sharp knife and add a little detail after we sand it a little bit. So let's just crisp it up a little bit. A little bit here. So I hope we've inspired you to, uh, or, or challenged you to turn a chess set. It's not beyond the range of a uh, novice turner, and who knows where it'll take you. Uh, I, I gave, I got my first set to my granddaughter, and she winds up giving me this tro uh, chess trophy she won. Um, so be sure to check out the other four-way collaboration videos on the same project: uh, Sam Angelo, Richard Raffin, and Tomislav Tomasic. And remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back here.